find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hold on, I got a woman and a kid 200 yards out moving towards the convoy. Her arms aren't swinging, and she's... Hello, Internet. Today is October 7th, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk everything movies from the week before, blah, before current, and still yet to come. On today's show, we're going to talk about a possible Iron Man 4, what Ben Affleck should and should do with his free time, should and should not do with his free time, and uh, who's still watching uh, Walking Dead. Uh, and possibly another Robin Hood. So, uh, our our awesome host coming from us. How's it going, Sorgatron? Hey, Malango, ready to talk movies. Very excited. Some of the stuff you got lined up here. Uh, want to see? Want to see uh, where we go with this? We had some great pre-show conversation. Actually, I can't wait to see uh, how that spills over. <laughs> nice. And then our New York connection, Mad Mike. How's it going? What up? I uh, watched a new movie this afternoon, and I feel a little dirtier for doing so, but I had to do it because journalism. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious now. You've piqued my interest. What, what go- movie did you watch that that made you think journalism, or was it for journalism? Oh, no, it, it's it's for journalistic purposes only because it serves <laughs> two masters. It serves the two podcasts I do tonight. So Nice. Uh, hey, let's jump into the uh, trailer of the week. Uh, American Sniper. Malengo, Malengo. Yes. Why, why do we want to see Rocket Raccoon kill a kid and kill a kid on Christmas? I, I feel like the more the more pressing question is, why is Clint Eastwood doing this to us? <laughs> what happened to Jersey Boys? That was so that was so nice, uplifting ish. Slaps us in the face with this He does thing. a happy movie, then he does a sad movie. Then he does a How- happy movie, then he does a sad movie. Yeah, it's on Christmas. <laughs> How was Jersey Boys not the Christmas release? <laughs> You'd think that would be better oh, going up against other Broadway movies like Annie and Lost in the Woods. But no, instead on Christmas you get, hey, you can either watch um, a lovely story about an orphan girl getting adopted by a bajillionaire. You can watch Lost in the Woods, which I'm not sure what it's about. I assume it's a spinoff of Once Upon a Time. Or you can watch Bradley Cooper try and kill women and children. Your pick, America! (laughs) Based on a true story, though, Mad Mike. So... Aren't they all based on true stories? I believe nothing (laughs) nothing that has to do with Christmas should be based on a true story. Unless, Unless it's like the Christmas Carol, which I assume... Has happened at some point throughout history. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, and the thing that sucks is you know it's going to be a good movie. I mean, it's going to be filmed well, so it's going to it's look going to be a well executed nice. movie. I wonder if it's just trying to get it in before the Oscar picks. Oh, that's probably true. But I mean, Clint, well, that's probably true. All right, hey, so this weekend in the box office, right? We had. Wow, a very close head-to-head. Gone Girl and Annabelle. What the hell is Annabelle? That's That's the the horror movie. Creepy doll. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that really pulled in that much money. Halloween. It's it's October officially, so now people want to see scary movies. Wow, the difference in about four hundred thousand dollars was the difference. Both of these movies brought in about uh, thirty-seven mil. I saw Gone Girl, and that is definitely worth spending money on. I don't know if you take your <laughs> – my wife and I went to see this, so I don't know if <laughs> – That had been an awkward post-conversation. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it would be a marital aid. <laughs> she really likes, like, uh, Law and & Order and, like, drama-type stuff. 
So this was this was good for us to like talk about after. But um, yeah, the the next other movie left behind uh, pulled in number six with about six point three mil. So uh, yeah, Equalizer was number three. So that's still holding on strong. It had about a forty five percent drop. But uh, but yeah. I ain't gone. I, I'm not going to go see Annabelle. So if somebody out there has seen it, let us know what you, what you thought. If it, if it scared the bejesus off of you or whatever. <laughs> oh, jeez. But yes. All right. Uh, moving on. So I'm just going to run down the, the list of, uh, I, I, Iron Man four guys. Woo. Yeah. We're excited. Yeah. Sure. Iron That's Man what- in space. Maybe <laughs> somebody at work made this joke that uh, this is this is the one where Jarvis goes crazy and just like <laughs> I'm, just starts doing it all. He's like, I'm, I've had it. I'm pretty sure that's going to be Age of Ultron. <laughs> just guessing. <laughs> I'm. T- I mean, I've read comic books. I'm assuming that's where that's going. <laughs> but um, oh man. I, I'm excited about a, an Iron Man 4, but uh, did you hear the rumor about Avengers 3, Malenga? No, it's rumor about Avengers 3. Uh, the rumor is that there Captain... Will be one. <laughs> well, no, no. The, ru- the rumor is that Captain America, Thor, uh, Hawkeye, and Widow will not be in it. Neither huh. will Hulk. The rumor is that Tony is going to be leading... Um, Doctor Strange, Ant Man, and uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver into battle. Huh. I don't know how I feel about that. I could be okay with it, but them calling it Iron Man th- or, or Avengers Three is but that I... like is that like deceitful? I mean, I guess I guess they're part of the Avengers, are they? People with oh. more comic book knowledge. Well, yes. Ant-Man, Ant-Man was one of the first Avengers, so I, I'm okay with it. I think it'll be I think it'll be interesting because the Avengers have always had like team ups where they'll like take one group off to do something and one group off to do something else. Plus, I wouldn't be surprised if that plays into it. Plus, it is. I thought that was the I thought that was the thing that they were going to do in the second movie, where they were going to have the team split. So, I mean, I, I I know what you're saying about like they've always had like. All right, in this Avengers, we're going to focus on this group. But I guess my question is, why call it? I mean, by calling it Avengers three, you know, they're not really closing the door on the franchise. They're kind of just opening it up for our continuation of different scenarios of Avengers movies, right? Yeah, but you have to remember, like Avengers two will have already been out, Ant Man will have already been out, Doctor Strange will have already been out. So they're just kind of rebooting the lineup. Like refreshing it. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that yet, but I mean, by the t- let's be honest, when when is that movie slated to come out? Like, oh, not till like twenty eighteen. <laughs> My daughter will be old enough to say, "Daddy, I want to see this movie," and I'll say, "All right, <laughs> let's do it." Um, I guess Sorg has nothing to say on that. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm all right with it. Uh, it. It makes sense in the scope of the Avengers because it's always it's a rotating team. What? Yeah, we can't hear you, Sork. Uh-oh. We'll work on that. Uh, go back to your thing. <laughs> okay, so Sorg is, Sorg is having some technical difficulties. Uh, do you want to move on to the next story and we can get Sorg's yes. thoughts on the Avengers back when he gets back in? Yeah, let's move on. So Ben Affleck, right? I mean, I, I just said I, I saw Gone Girl and I, I loved him in that movie. Um. And then I saw the story about Ben Affleck doing a, uh, well, what would you call this? A dedication, an homage, no, not an homage, a uh, whatever. He's doing a movie on the Boston Marathon, basically called possibly Boston Strong. Uh. <laughs> uh. Noise in my ear. Um, but yeah, like basically. He's from. <laughs> Mad Mike, you still here? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so he's from Boston originally, right? So yeah. the idea of him doing this movie, you know, logistically makes sense 
you know, it's like logically, yeah, he's from there. He wants to pay homage to like his hometown. But I had two questions. One, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's if it's a cop out. Maybe I'm just being, you know, a whiny baby about oh Ben Affleck going back to Boston, doing another Boston accent, you know, with this this movie that should it be made? Is my second question. Is this too soon? No, I mean, th- there have been tons of movies made about 9-11, so this is basically the same concept. And I thought those were too soon. <laughs> and, it, and it looks like this is done by, um, this is going to be Casey Affleck, not Ben Affleck. Oh, yeah, I did see that. It was uh, it was headlined by Casey Affleck. Um, so I guess the, uh, the lead in it, um, uh, what was it? What's his name? Casey uh, Affleck? No. Uh, well, it, it's based off of just Jeff Bauman, yeah. which I, I think I saw. I think he was in a documentary that actually talked about uh, his story. But, I mean, he wrote a book about it. Like, I don't know, just the whole 9 11 thing, and this feels like it's just playing off that again. So it's, it's already like pulling on the heartstrings. I don't know. I don't think this is a movie that I would go see because it's too real. Yeah, I don't. I don't like movies um, that kind of try to cash in on tragedies like this. Like, unless it's a, unless it's a documentary. If it's a documentary about something like that, then you know that's a, at least a little bit better. But I don't know. It just seems like it's unnecessary. Yeah. I, I, I mean, unless. All proceeds for the movie are like going to charities in Boston, which I don't think that's the case. But like I don't know, it just seems shameless trying to cash in on the publicity of a uh, tragedy like that. Yeah. Uh, let's. Uh, speaking of cashing in, I don't even know if we've cashed in on this. Uh, Walking Dead, right? So I stopped watching Walking Dead maybe two seasons ago. And I just had like my coworkers spoil the ending, or at least what I had missed. And then I, I came to the resolution that yes, I'm glad I stopped watching that because that's just a lot of pointless stuff. But it got slated for a sixth season, and it made me question: Are I'm guessing people are still wa- watching this, right? Oh like, yeah, oh yeah. The ratings for Walking Dead are still pretty huge, especially um, with Talking Dead afterwards now too. Like, I mean, t- yes, Talking Dead was very interesting. Am I back? Am I back? Do you guys got hey. me? Hey, yeah. okay, okay. So something, back. something went weird with that little feedback to you. Everybody could hear me on the recording and, and everything. Um, dude, Walk, Walking Dead's the best thing on TV. What are you talking about? Um, I, I, I completely. I, it did get long in the tooth, um, but they've compartmentalized things. I think the last couple of seasons. Um, and at what, what at what point did you leave off, Belengo? What were they I think doing? I, it's sad. I left right before uh, I I got to where the uh, the general was doing his like rebranding of himself. Yeah. So and then I left. They they had like that two week break, and it was right before he was going to attack the prison. And I was kind of like, I'm I'm just done. That was the best. Now 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 I'm somebody that read like the first like seventy issues of the comic. So yeah. I'm still in that, like, oh, they're doing the thing from the book, yes. Uh, so, I mean, I'm getting over that, but I'm loving to seeing where they're going. And and that I'm aware of, at least to the point where I am, the thing that they got to now is something that's not even close to anything in the comic book that I'm aware of. Um, and I'm sure somebody that's read further than I have maybe can, can prove me wrong, because by this point in the book, they went somewhere else than where they ended up in the in the, in the the show. And I'm very interested to see how that's doing. It's keeping me strung along. Mm-hmm. Um it's it's I love the I, I and yeah, it can seem a little long sometimes. It'd be like, well, we'll get to the point of it. It's like, well, again, it, it's kind of the kind of the problem of serialized drama TV that I was just talking with Mike about from that they talked about on the Anaka Almanac this week, if you want to look that up. About this weird open endedness. Every drama has this problem. This is our problem. This is the thing that drives us nuts about Smallville, about arrows, about anything else. It's like get to the freaking point. And and yeah. and, and 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 Walking Dead definitely has those things. That's what that's when people lose their interest into you know these shows like you did, right? Plus, I mean, plus doing I, the week to week. Week to week's tough for a show like this. Really oh, yeah. tough. I you mean, want know, to binge this thing. I, it killed me to do week to week. I was getting it on Amazon subscription uh, yeah. last week. And it killed me. I'd let a couple build up. 
just so I can hit a couple uh, at a time. Doctor oh, Who I've going week the week's kind of killing me too. But uh, yeah, same. Oh, I agree. Doctor Who is one where I have not got to episode two, <laughs> and, and people are like, "Oh, it's, it's, I can't believe we're eight episodes in." Like yeah. I'm like really I watched I've watched eight episodes of Peter Capaldi like, like no it, he hasn't done eight episodes yet seven eight something like that four 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 I thought it's more than four no it's more than four dude I look at the thing it's okay. like episode okay. seven I'm like wait 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 what we're this deep huh maybe yeah. a lot it, longer but it doesn't feel like it right no I well, mean it also not- there also doesn't seem to be a through line yet. Yeah, yeah, we're we're kind of figuring that out, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know if you're going to talk about this in awesome cast, but I mean, definitely the fact that even Amazon, if you notice, with their, uh, I, uh, well, I don't know what podcast I was listening to, um, but they were talking about uh, Amazon's like actual first serious attempt at a series, and uh, I think it was trans transparent, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, it's it's for binging. Like they released all the episodes, they're like, "This is the right model. We should have just done that." And that's what I'm kind of like. I think these week to week things aren't like uh, I, AMC's um, Fire. Is it Fire and the one that's like the uh, the tech startup type thing? Hatch and Fire and Hatch Be- Beta. Oh, uh, Fire. Oh, uh, uh, Paul uh, and Catch Fire. Paul and Catch Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hulk. I, had I, I just watched I just watched season one binging online and it I would there's no way I would have been able to keep up. With no, that and I didn't and, and I didn't week to week like I, I love the show, but I just can't keep up like and by the time I want a couple to catch up and the way I was watching it was on their their site. And, 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 you know, it's that rolling like we're getting you can only see the last three episodes. It's like, you know what? It'll be on Netflix next year. I'll watch it. You know, yeah, I, I can wait. I'm cool with that. You know, I, I'm patient when it comes to that. It's it's the worst thing ever though when you're when you want to watch a show and you're trying to catch up on it so you binge the first season or two and then you have to go to week to week. <laughs> that is the oh, worst. Yes. It's the absolute worst. Walking Dead. That's how, that's how I watch Doctor Who. Like mm-hmm. I didn't come into Doctor Who live action like week to week until like season five. Yeah. So I binged all of seasons one through four. And it was very nice to not have commercials or anything like that. And then I started watching it week to week. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is interminable. This is horrible. <laughs> I definitely think Netflix spoiled a lot of people in, in that industry by giving us what we would like, which was what we want. <laughs> I'm not going to steal the tagline from the show that I'm thinking of. So. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, uh, Drew- Jubilee in the uh, chat room says she also hates mid-season breaks. Oh, the worst! Which oh the gosh, worst. yeah, they're the worst. Like, do they? Pe- do they? Do networks think people don't watch TV during Christmas? Because that's literally all I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Grim. Grim used to piss me off with that. It's like, oh my gosh, cliffhanger! Oh, we'll be back in two weeks. What dude, the hell? Dude, one time, uh, I, I think I watched the season finale and didn't realize it. <laughs> With Grim. And that That's was the worst. Like, wait a minute. Why? Wow, wow. Oh, I can't awesome. wait till next week to find out what happened. What? But of course, oh, I'm not sitting awesome. there. Like we talked about before, how it pisses me off uh, the, the commercials were just watching TV live, over the air TV live. I watched the finale of Arrow and it just pissed me off with the, the stuff that, that comes on screen, the commercials. It, it just, I could not stand it. I'll take my, I'll take paying for it on Prime or I'll take watching it on Hulu with the two to three commercials guaranteed, you know, in between each, each thing and no more, no less a lot of times. Um, sometimes just get one, to be honest. Um, I, you know, I, I just I just can't consume that way anymore. You know, I, I don't want to waste my time. With, I don't want to waste my time. That's basically it. I want to watch again. I'll steal it. what I want when I want, which means I'm not going to do it on NBC's time with what they want to put in front of me. That's uh, why I like DVR. Like, yeah. I hardly ever watch oh, anything. Yeah. I hardly ever watch anything live anymore, but DVR makes it. So yeah, even weird. when I still have TV, that was the only way I watch stuff. <laughs> My wife got mad at me the other day. While we were watching something on DVR, I let it go to commercial so I could go get a snack. And she was like, yes, I remember those days when commercials were used to go get you know, some food, go put something in the laundry, 
go to the bathroom. Not anymore. She is like the queen of fast forwarding through these commercials on DVR and continuing the show. She has it down to a science. <laughs> like, all right, I'm sorry. Sorry that I, I wanted food. Um, oh, guys, that's, I really, actually, that's really your own fault, Malika. Yeah, yeah. right. I didn't, I didn't pre-plan. You had to pre-plan these things. Hey, uh, I saw another story. So what do you guys want to talk about? I Actually, I didn't post this up. So I'll just I'll state this, and we could go into it, or we could talk about Robin Hood. So, I do not uh, want to talk about Robin Hood. Okay, so how about <laughs> uh, Jeremy uh, Keener is going to continue as the Bourne Legacy. So we, we've already left Matt Damon, and we've gone to the new guy. Okay. Did you guys Jeremy, actually... Jeremy Renner, right? Yeah, yeah Renner. Um, okay. Can can I? Can, okay, this is my thing. I I didn't realize Bur- Born, the Born series was such a big deal that it became a franchise that we can James Bond this thing and just give it to a different person. I'm still not sure that it is a big franchise. It I think is if you just made the... four movies and you're making more. I feel like Some... it's something they're just stuffing down our throat. Like, it, no, 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 they, no, 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 no. You don't make four movies in a series. Um, you don't make Taken Sorg. 3 if the first two didn't make you money. Sorg, Land Before Time. They made a money on the on the. They made, videos. they made like 13 Land Before Times. Because it became a straight-to-video thing, and it was... It was uh, you don't have to be a $400 million movie like Guardians of the Galaxy to be a profitable movie. Tusk brought in what six grand and they're profitable already, and that's what matters. If taken only takes so much to make, but enough people come and 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 they make all the rest on the DVD and everything like that, it's still profitable and they're going to keep making it. There's an interest, um, and something like the Born, whatever. Um, there's enough people came out for that. It made money. They're going to make more. It's a good and it's a good vehicle for Jeremy Renner to hop on to. Oh, uh, man, I'm looking at the, the possible directors that they're bringing in and the writers, and it just, eh. Fast and Furious, uh, the Fast and Furious guy, Justin Lin, is attached to direct, and then um, it looks like the guys that, I, I, I don't know if I'm reading this wrong, but it, it looks like he might have also been attached to True Detective. I think that's positive, but the Fast and the Furious series, well, I can't, actually, I can't bash that. Because Fast and Furious Six was like a completely different thing than it's like they they went back to Fast and Furious One and they're like let's actually think about this we know it's far fetched but let's take a second and think about it and it actually was a better movie than Tokyo Drift. I don't, um, I don't know. I mean, I I saw the first Born movie and it didn't really grab my attention so whenever i see them making new ones i'm like oh yeah that's probably still a thing where he's just running around on rooftops dodging cops that's basically it i don't think it really changed all that much like one of them he's like he's like he's attacking the fbi or something and and that was kind of interesting you know the the thing is i think i've seen the first three movies but i can't remember anything distinctive about any of them they're really nice show pieces (laughs) they're really nice uh postcard kind of movies um you know it's really cool. It's like, let's see what we could do running around in Paris or Rome or whatever yeah. places they've been. And I appreciate movies like that. I, I actually, I just realized I did see a movie this weekend that I'm putting in the comments right now that kind of does some of that uh, with Greece. Uh, but, you know, that's what it is. It's a postcard. It's a postcard picture. All right. Multiple choice real quick. Born Legacy or whatever. The Born series. Uh, Mission Impossible or Bond. Ugh. What do you go see? What do you go see? Um, what do you, or give me an order. You know what? Uh, I would go Bond, Mission Impossible, Born. Uh, yeah, that's Mission what I was Impossible. Thinking. Yeah, me too. Mission Impossible is wildly fluctuating in quality, but I'm sorry, I love the Ghost Product Protocol. I, I rewatched that within the last year. I still dig that movie. Three, I still dig three. Two, yeah, I still I still think the first one three was like ah doves in the Limp Bizkit soundtrack. Uh, I don't know about going back to that one, uh, but every but I, it's it's Tom Cruise being awesome Tom Cruise, which is what I was hoping I was going to get out of Jack Reacher, but it got a little awkward. Oh, Jack <laughs> Reacher though, that was good. I like that. It, it could have been flick. it could have been better. Jack Reacher was awful. It was oh, I, I, we got. Oh, I'm sorry. We. 
we're it was shot in Pittsburgh. It's you know what? That was our striking distance of this generation. <laughs> Is that something to be admired? Uh, well, well, Striking Distance was not a good movie. Go back and watch. Do you remember Striking Distance? Vaguely. You very don't. Vaguely. You don't because you're not from Pittsburgh. <laughs> now, if you go back and watch Striking Distance, I, now that you've I been here. sudden it, death. Because I'm sorry. It's just like, remember how excited you were last night, Mike, when we we're watching Muddy Night Raw and they got on the subway and you're like, I know that subway. And, oh, they're going to Coney Island and he's got a hot dog cart. That's my effing town, right? That's the same thing with Striking Districts. It's like he got off a boat and he walked downstairs. That doesn't happen at the point. You know that. <laughs> Played really well. I, I, like I, I talked to somebody that watched it like back in the day when it came out. It's like, yeah, that w- that played really hot here in Pittsburgh. Nobody else cared. Has so, Bruce Sorg, Willis? How, how many times have you seen Abduction? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Abduction. The, the movie with the kid from the Twilight movie. So it was filmed all over Pittsburgh. Did I see? I did see that one. <laughs> I did see that one. When I went into it, I didn't realize it was the Pittsburgh movie until I started. It was on Netflix. And I'm like, oh, it's got that guy. Let's see what this is about. It doesn't look teen poppy, whatever, like like the other stuff he's in. Um, and uh, and I was like, oh, it's a Pittsburgh movie. <laughs> uh, she's out of my league. Another one. Um, hell, give me house guests with Sinbad. How about, how about Dogma? Is that fair? Dogma. That's, that's great. You know how yeah. much was filmed like a half mile from my house? <laughs> Blango, you, you guys, drive by what, it, right? You drive by the form of movies every day on Banksville. Guys, what the hell are X Men babies? X babies? What? What are X babies? Uh, well, they are clearly the X Men. I believe it's an alternate reality uh, X Men where they're all babies. Yes, if I recall, I've never read the books that involve them. But I know it's a thing. Why? I read oh, one of them. It was pretty funny. Why in the world are you asking me that? Uh, <laughs> because uh, coming soon, just posted an article 22 minutes ago on rumors that Fox could be bringing this to television. Oh, Fox is out of control. Somebody stop them. They are. Well, to <laughs> be fair, they're going to have to put something on when they cancel Gotham after one season. Oh gosh, they better not. Wait, do we're talking that. about a TV. We're talking about a TV series. Yes, a TV series is rumored. Fox is out of control. Stop them, somebody. They are. There was I'll, a joke. I'll only accept that if it's a cartoon and the theme song is just Muppet Babies, but instead of Muppet, you say X Men. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I mean, this is just a rumor from Bleeding Cool, so. Eh, I, yeah, because Bleeding Cool sounds like a site that I'm going to believe rumors from. <laughs> oh, there was a joke today. That's like, that, that's like, uh, that's like taking saying... wrestling rumors from the Body Slam. Or... That's, no, it's like saying, oh, Bleacher Report said it, so it must be true. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, it was like, uh, what was the joke at work today? Something about, like, yeah, if it's a bad, if it's definitely a bad t- television show, Fox will hold on to it for, like, many seasons. Oh, we were talking about that uh, really bad, uh, it's like Maloney or something. And I thought it was, have you guys? Oh, Maloney? Yeah. Maloney, yeah. I didn't was, get to watch it, but I heard it was uh, not good. It was not good. It was like so wanting to be Seinfeld. And I was laughing because he spells his name like mine, except for the last two letters. So my wife's saying they're like, why is your name on screen? It's like, it's not, it's not on screen. It's just really bad Seinfeld wannabe guy with really bad jokes. But yeah, that's that. All right, let's move on to other stuff that we talk about. Like, what are you guys watching? Oh, I'm watching so much TV right now. I'm watching so much TV. I've, You're not watching I've, Sons of Anarchy, are you? No. All right. No, I, I watched actually a lot of new shows. Like, I, oh. uh, I watched Selfie. Oh, gosh, I watched that, and I will not be watching yeah, any more of that. The wife is into it. I'm, I'm stuck with it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to give it. I'm I'm giving most new shows that I watch a standard five episode lead. If they can't hook me by five episodes, they're done. You know the problem. There was an argument about the the title and marketing of selfie and the fact that it should not have been called selfie, especially since it first episode you can clearly tell it's not all about selfies. It has nothing to do about selfies. 
No. All right, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I kind I kind of get what they're going for. With my my problem uh, is that this is a show titled to expire because our selfie is going to be a thing in like say this actually gets a run of seven sh- seven seasons like a How I Met Your Mother is selfie going to be a word that works anymore as quick yeah, as the that, internet goes? That's what they call the 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 Facebook movie the Social Network and not Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, so they wouldn't get sued. Well, I'm pretty sure they couldn't just call it the Facebook movie. I I, I thought they worked with uh, the dude who made it. Um, one of the guys that wrote the book, like the guy that got screwed, I think was involved. So oh, okay. it was not okay. it was not authorized by Facebook at all. Okay, okay. at all. Um, <laughs> what else did you watch, Mike? Um, well, I'm excited for Flash tonight, but I've actually been watching the uh, new Ninja Turtles cartoon. And season three just started, and it's really, really good. Hmm. Which was odd because they changed the voice actor for Leonardo, so they had to reference it, um, like in a reason actually on the show. Hmm. And um, and the movie I saw, which which I teased earlier, was the WWE Films presents Leprechaun Origins, which is one Same of their horror. Horrible- yeah, um, <laughs> it's it's a reboot slash reimagining of the Leprechaun franchise. Um, yeah, basically, if if you like the Leprechaun franchise with uh, with um, oh, what's his name? Oh, I just heard the name today. I'm, I can't think of it. Yeah, I can't. But if you like the old Leprechaun franchise, you probably will not like this because uh, Hornswoggle doesn't speak in the movie. You. Uh, he do- he doesn't wear a hat. Uh, he's still obsessed with gold, hmm. but um, he didn't look like a leprechaun. He looked like a goblin, and it was very off-putting. And oh, uh, it just it wasn't even like funny bad. It was just bad. Like <laughs> I would watch Tusk a thousand times over before watching Leprechaun Origins again. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't sound good. However, if it, if it comes on Netflix and you want something stupid to watch for an hour and a half, sure, give it a shot because the the CG in it is really really bad. <laughs> it's really really bad, and it and also if you don't like Irish people, they really they really mock Irish people. Nice, yeah. So that's good. Nice. Uh, what about you, Sword? Oh, wait. Yeah, so, I got some. I got Mad some Mike, stuff. You didn't, you, oh, oh, Mad Mike, you saw no movies in theaters? Uh, there's nothing really I want to go. Well, plus I got Super Smash Brothers this weekend, so um, I, I was indisposed. That I was indisposed. explains it. Yeah. What about you, Sword? I did see a movie. Uh, generally, I'm watching uh, still more Californication. I did watch Selfie. I'm catching up with all the, the Gotham and, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff, of, of course. Um, I did see in a theater, in the Hollywood Theater, mind you, over in Dormont. Uh, it was the Kickstarter uh, campaign backers party for the digital Go Digital campaign, uh, where they uh, upgraded to a new DCP, I believe the initials, projector. So the digital projector that a lot of them are using. They need this for the new format. They can only get some movies on this. I actually got to check out the projector. They actually get the movies like in a suitcase on a hard drive, like a long hard drive, and stick it in this machine, and they can program it and everything. Got to take a tour of the booth and check it out. Uh, the movie I saw was uh, The Two Faces of January. Um, again, you know, it's just like, oh, cool, you know, let's go see it. It's a movie, you know, uh, you know, uh, let's see how it looks. And again, I, I kind of reference this in the Bourne thing. One of those postcard movies, it's a period piece, probably in the 40s or something, has Vito, Vigo, Vigo Mortensen and uh, Kirsten Dunst in it. Um, I don't want to get too into it because there's a lot of, like, I didn't see any trailers going into it, so I don't know how spoilerly, you know, I can get about it. But something bad happens. Somebody dies and they're on the run around Greece. And they uh, run into a tour guide who happens to be American, and that helps them along the way. And it gets kind of interesting. Um, again, it's kind of those artsy kind of films. Probably an okay one to watch with the wife or something, but not one I would seek out. You know, probably one I would be like, oh, what's this thing on Netflix? And watch it there. 
Yeah. Um, but it was a good film. Uh, the new digital projector in there looks way better. Um, I saw Ghostbusters, I think is the last thing I might have seen down there. Um, a few, uh, probably like in the in the spring. And I remember it was like, eh, it could look a little better, you know. Um, and I think yeah. at the time those were on like, you know, Blu-ray or DVD. They might have been showing them on. Um, but it's a big, it's a big theater, guys, you know, and, and to have that blown up um, on that big screen. It's a good size screen, too. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was really cool to see, uh, really cool, cool to see a little bit behind the scenes. We, of course, got a tour uh, on the Unsung show. It's over on YouTube.com slash Unsung News uh, of the entire old place. So just kind of a cool movie thing happening. And this is a community theater. Um, so if you go, I want to give a plug out there. So go check them out at the Hollywood dormont.org uh to see what's coming up uh they got some cool stuff i want to hit some stuff uh dead snow 2 red versus dead is coming out next week like playing next monday and tuesday i'm thinking of skipping Ooh. raw and going watching it um Ooh. and also they are showing uh some movie called blackenstein i'm kind of curious what that's about uh <laughs> they're showing they're showing uh several runs of halloween leading up to uh, uh the week of halloween uh, so I, I think it'd be kind of cool to go watch like that original film like in a theater like that. So if I'm free that Thursday, I might be heading out for that. Um, it's always fun to go see like retro movies. That... Oh yeah, that's why I went and go so, saw Ghostbusters because it was just like you know I've never seen this in a theater. I've seen it on a VHS growing up and and DVD since you know I, I've never had that experience and it was really cool to go go watch it in a theater from the balcony, for instance. So um, but yeah, that's that's the bulk of what I'm into. Cool. Uh, let's see. I saw Gone Girl, and like I said before, it's really good. Um, I think I would actually recommend it paying full price because although there are a lot of twists, it's pretty good. If you're into drama and like mystery type, twisty type movies like that, um, and it also bashes the media in a great way, which is awesome. Um, I also saw This Is Where You Leave Me. Uh, that oh, was, is that is that the comedy movie about the uh, family whose dad dies and then they all have to stay in the house? Yeah, okay. I don't. I mean, I I understand that it was supposed to be a comedy. It was a little forced comedy. Wait, what was this like? Um, this is where you leave me. Oh, okay. I, I thought I heard like a part of your description. It sounds like the Homebound movie that was supposed to come out. That that again, there when I saw a preview of it, the Hollywood. But uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's uh it's like that. I I classify these movies as the um finding yourself type movies. And uh I mean it wasn't bad. There's some the actors that are in it are like Tina Fey's in it. Um the guy from uh Girls, the boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Um from Mean Girls, is it me? No, Girls. I think it's just Girls. But um yeah, like no, mean, mean Girls is a completely different thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the cast is good, so I'll give it that. Uh, but I don't know. The family dynamic is interesting, and it has like a really weird like uh, twist at the end that I I don't know what they were really trying to. I don't know something about you know family love and blah blah blah. Life goes on, but it's it's okay. I don't know if I'd spend money to go see it, but. Sure. I also um, I also got to see a uh, pre-release of a second. Uh, what's the what the hell? Not blind date. I can't remember it. It doesn't come out. It, it's not coming out for a couple weeks. Uh, oh, two night stand. Uh, have you guys if you guys heard of this at all? I haven't heard of two night stand. No. Uh, well, my quick review on it is uh. What what's it about? Like it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it's about um, uh, this an it's an up and coming kid. Hold on, let me find his name because I can't remember his name. Uh, Miles Tell uh Miles Teller. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, <clears throat> Does that not ring anything for you? No, uh, yeah, Miles Teller, Anna Lee Tipton, yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't know, I forgot that he was, was. I forgot that he's in the Fantastic Four. Um, yeah, I think this is this is supposed to be. I think guys, I think this is a movie industry saying these are what kids are like now. Like these are what like twenty and thirty or twenty the you know that college age. These are how we all meet people now online and stuff. 
and this is how all these interactions work and I don't know it was it wasn't my demographic so I kind of said okay whatever it wasn't it wasn't very funny either it was just interesting so I don't expect that movie to do well in theaters but I could be wrong I mean people are watching selfie mad mike um <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving crap because Karen Gillum and John Cho are very, very likable actors. That's my thing with that uh, show. That's my thing with that her. show because, like, I'm watching it for Swords those two. To say something very compelling. Oh, geez, here we go again. <laughs> um, I watch it for those two, but, but uh, hold on a second. Um, but I yeah, want sure, the show sure. to work better. <laughs> 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 The funny thing is that the people who are listening to this can hear Sora perfectly fine. We just can't. <laughs> um, but but I think Sora was just saying that Karen Gillum's awesome too because she's on Doctor Who. She was in Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, oh, I, she I, was the girl from Doctor Who. Oh, don't you dare besmirch, besmirch the name of Amy Pond. Dude, no, I love Amy Pond, but I, for the life of me, I was like, where is she from? <laughs> and she also did not do her accent, which is awesome acting. <laughs> no, I mean I'm going I'm going to give it a shot because I think the um the first fifteen minutes of that of that first episode were supposed to be really jarring and not flattering because that's kind of the whole point of the show is to have her be on a journey to become like a regular person. Yeah. I mean, did any point of that make you laugh? Or do you um, not think that that's what that is? It's not supposed to be a comedy. No, it's supposed to be a comedy. Yeah. I, I laughed once or twice. I laughed once or twice. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'll, I agree. Maybe I should give it a second episode. At least for everything, I'll give it a second episode. So I will try that again. Uh, just real quick on other random television stuff, because I know we got to wrap this up. Uh, I saw, <laughs> I watched Blackish. And that actually made me laugh. I watched two episodes of it, and I was like, I don't know if it's going to reach all the demographic that they're trying to. Somebody tried to tell me that it is supposed to be like the Cosby of our age, and I disagree with that because I think Cosby was more general to all different kinds of races. And I think this is stereo like this is very stereotypical to one specific race <laughs> and how they forged their way through life, but. That being said, it was funny. I don't know if it's funny because of, of it. Kind of seemed like the Jeffersons. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I didn't. I didn't watch it just because I didn't know when it was on. I didn't really get a chance to see it. But it from the previews, it kind of looked like the Jeffersons or like Tyler Perry presents the Jeffersons. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> Tyler Perry. Uh, the the main character. Um, I suck at names today. It's Anthony Anderson, right? Yeah, he he. To be, because uh, I know I think Fish Fishburn is in it. Fishburne. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburn. Lawrence Fishburn. His voice of reason is interesting, and I like the fact that he's in it, and not your other stereotypical other black actors that usually play those roles. The the black man of voice. Um, but <laughs> Anthony's character is freaking hilarious. He sells that show, which he should. He he's the one who I was applauding. Uh, I think Sword's telling us something. No, no, he's not. But we, uh, whoa, there's a whole bunch of stuff that got added. Uh, where can we find you, Mad Mike? Uh, you can find me at Mad Mike4883 on the Twitter machine. And um, I'm also on the Wrestling Mayhem show, 9 p.m. on live.sorgatronmedia.com. And that's, and that's where you can find Sorgatron, too. Yep. Um, I'm supposed to plug stuff. I'm going to plug Extra Life. Uh, don't know what that is, but I'm plugging it. Extra, Extra Life is um, a, uh, a charity event that's being put on by Intercoin to begin. And it's uh, Riz and Bobby FJ Town. They're playing video games for 24 hours. Nice. And they raise money for children's hospitals. And it's going to be live streaming on the SorgatronMedia.com page. Nice. And um, I'm sure, Sorg, you will have a link to that on uh, your site. There is a there's a link. It's a bitly slash extra life insert coin, and you can click you can go to that link and you can donate and you can help uh, some kids who need the money more than we do probably. Nice, 
And then, um, yeah, you can find me. Uh, I do venture Twitter when I can. Also, we have a Facebook group, the Rambling Movie Minute. So you can find me at Rambling Mango on Twitter, or you can check out that group. Um, and, yeah, with that, until next week, have a Rambling Movie weekend. And, Mike, since we can't hear you, you can say your tag, and we'll enjoy it. Yeah. Is that me? Is that me? <laughs> Have a good week. I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter. I will see you guys next week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.